Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. In today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to make this photograph of a sand dollar much more interesting by adding a background that complements its texture, color, and structure. I've already created this multi-layered document that has a photo of a sand dollar as well as a scan of some paper. Now to remove the white background from around the sand dollar, I'll choose the Select menu and then Subject. Then to check on the selection, I'll use the View menu to view 100% and press the space bar to temporarily access the Hand tool. I'll tap the L key in order to select the Lasso tool and then hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows to subtract this little area here that the Select Subject command missed. Then I'll click the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel to convert the selection to a mask. Next, I'll select the Background Layer, and I want to add an image, so I'll choose File, and then Place Embedded. I'll navigate to this image of a textured wall and place the image, and that's going to place this raw photograph as a smart object on a layer above the background. Now let's toggle the visibility of the paper scan and I'll zoom in even more to make sure that we can see the difference here between the structure of the sand dollar and the background. This is often the case in compositing that the structures of the file or the texture or the grain will differ. In this case, the photographs were taken with different cameras under different lighting conditions, and they were using different ISO settings. So in order to help unify the images, I'll choose Layer, and then Smart Objects, and edit the contents of this photograph of the wall. I'll zoom in to 100%, and in the Detail panel, I'm going to increase the Noise Reduction slider, in order to soften the structure of the file by reducing the amount of noise. Then, because I think that makes it look a little bit too soft, I'm going to add back in texture using the paper scan by setting the blend mode to soft light and decreasing the opacity a little bit. Then I'll use the view menu in order to zoom out and fit the image on screen. Now, to make the sand dollar appear as if it's sitting on the textured background, I'll select the sand dollar layer in the Layers panel and click on the Effects icon in order to add a drop shadow. To change the angle and the distance of the drop shadow, I can click and drag in the image area. Then I'll increase the size of the drop shadow as well as the opacity. Now, to add even more separation between the sand dollar and this background wall and texture, I'll select the paper scan layer, then tap I to select the eyedropper and select a brown color from the sand dollar. Then I'll use the color panel set to color wheel in order to quickly select a color that's opposite of that brown on the color wheel. On the Layers panel, I'll add a solid color fill layer, and Photoshop will automatically select that color for me. Then to view the luminosity values of the layers below, I'll change the blend mode to color. Now because I don't want the blue color to appear in the entire image, I'll target the mask, and then choose Edit, Fill, and fill the mask with black to hide the contents of the layer. Then I'll tap the B key to select the Brush tool, use the left or right bracket keys to get a larger or smaller brush, tap the 2 key to set the opacity to 20%, and painting with white as my foreground color, I'll slowly build up that blue color around the sand dollar in the areas that I want it to appear. Now to give the edges a more worn look, I'll use Command minus in order to zoom out and then add another solid color fill layer. This time I'll choose white as the color, target the mask in the layers panel, and again choose edit, fill to fill the mask with black to hide the contents of the layer. With the brush still selected and set to 20% opacity, 
I'll slowly paint around the edge of my image wherever I want those white edges to appear. If I ever paint too much, I can always tap the X key. That would exchange my foreground and background colors, and then I could paint with black to hide the contents of that layer. If the overall effect is too much, I can always change the opacity of the layer as well. Finally, to decrease the saturation of all of the layers at one time, I'll select the sand dollar layer in the layers panel, and from the bottom of the layers panel, I'll add a black and white adjustment layer. Then I'll decrease the opacity in order to reveal some of the colors from the layers below, and I can use the sliders in the properties panel to adjust the brightness values of individual color ranges as they're converted to black and white. So there you go, an easy way to make the photograph of the sand dollar more interesting by adding a background that complements its texture, color, and structure. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.